What's going on guys? Tony here with Big Buildings Direct. Today we're gonna talk about the biggest mistakes I made on this barn right here and why I'm building another one. So first things first, what I really wish I would have thought about more is the map of the building. I always say a building is like a map. So you might have an area that you're gonna hang out a lot and you might have an area where you're gonna work on your cars, work on your dirt bikes, have a place to sit and enjoy a nice dinner, things of that nature. You really wanna make sure that everything flows cohesively. So my mistake that I made on my map of my building is I basically cut half of the building for a lean-to and then one side of the building was the other half for the other lean-to. So essentially you have two separate areas that are on the opposite sides of the building really cuts the flow of the building, something I didn't think of at all. And uh, now it turns out that it is a little bit of a uh, pain in the ass. Not thinking of the future of what I would be doing in my life three, five, 10 years from now is one of the biggest mistakes I made on this metal building project. I didn't think that I would be driving an RV and a trailer in here. So I built my loft essentially 15 foot off the wall of the end of my building. So now essentially the longest RV that I can drive into my barn is 40 feet long, which is big, it's a big RV. But if I attach a trailer to it, then it's essentially gonna be too long for my metal building. I'm not gonna be able to park an RV and a trailer inside my metal barn. So something I didn't think about, but now I'm going, oh shoot, I should have you know, done the loft on one side of my barn, and then that way I could pull in an RV with a trailer and kind of get the maximum storage of the 60 foot long building that I have. Think about all your options and your decisions. Think about those five or 10 years from now, not just in the present moment. Hiring the wrong contractor to do any type of woodwork or work inside your metal building. Your building's installed, everything's good to go, you're a happy as pie, and then you wanna do a loft or a race room. You don't wanna hire the wrong guy. Make sure you do your due diligence, you see some work that they've done, you see some projects they've worked on, you've also looked at their reviews and made sure they're a legitimate business. We're all guilty of it. My land looks level, everything looks great, but then when you get out the line level and things get serious and your building's getting installed, your foundation's out of whack. Don't be that guy. If your land is not perfectly level, then you're not gonna have a good metal building. That's a promise. So make sure that your land's level. Don't make that mistake. It's something that can be the make or break in the best metal building or the worst. Even if your concrete guy says he did a perfect job, take a tape measure out there. Make sure your building foundation is perfectly square. That means one corner to the other corner, everything is perfectly square. And then that way we can put up your metal building perfectly. Insulate the building right away. You definitely wanna make sure that your building is sealed. So the nice thing about insulation is it really seals the building. It takes care of a lot of the dust, the debris, the bugs, or anything that could get in your building can't get in when you fully insulate it and you seal your building. So you wanna make sure that when you first get your building installed, the first thing you try to do is get that building insulated as soon as possible, seal it up, make it airtight, and that way you can spend a lot more time in here getting what you need done, done. See this right here? It's a tape measure. Big mistake that you can make in your metal building project is not measuring out all of your equipment, all of your vehicles inside your metal building. The last thing you wanna do in a metal building project is build a 12 by 30 barn and need 35 feet or 40 feet length. You wanna make sure that your barn and your garage is gonna fit your vehicles. You need to be able to open your doors, have three feet to walk around, something to think about on your metal building project. You wanna also measure the width of your vehicle. An eight by eight garage door is not going to fit a monster truck inside of it. You need to measure the width. You need about one foot on each side minimum. So on a standard pickup truck, I always recommend 10 by eight garage doors. On an RV, I recommend at least a 14 by 14. But the only way you're gonna really know is measure. Figure out what you really need for your metal building to become a reality. If you need as-built engineered drawings, generic engineered drawings, calculations, those are very important in the whole entire process. They can be the hurdling block on between getting a building or not getting a building. Make sure your building's built to your local codes. If you're in New York, do not build a 10 pound snow load. Make sure it's certified to meet and exceed all your local codes. It's probably one of the most important things you can do in order to make your building last. 
Guys, just like when you get your concrete done before you get a building, you also need to think about the other things you're gonna be doing when the building's put up. A very big mistake is I got the floor done on this garage. The floor was absolutely awesome, looked amazing. But then after I got the floor done, I did the spray foam. And as much as they covered the floor and tried to protect the floor from getting spray foam on it, there is spots on the garage where the spray foam has hit the ground and my amazing floor is not so amazing in certain spots. So make sure you think about the order of operations. Don't make that mistake. You first wanna do the concrete, then you wanna do the building, then you wanna do the electric, plumbing, then spray foam, then get your floors done last. That way you can ensure that they're really nice and shiny. Last but certainly not least is my garage doors. Um, I was guilty of trying to make the most beautiful barn in the world, but I didn't make the most versatile or useful barn in the world. So I did a nice 14 by 14 in the front of my garage. When you pull up, you go, oh my God, this is beautiful. But if I pull in an RV all the way in the front of my building, there's nothing else that can get out there. So something to think about in a mistake that I made is not having enough side entry points on my garage. That way I can pull in all my equipment and not have to worry about it being in the way of anything else. So kind of going back to the map of the building, you wanna lay it out and figure out what you're gonna use it for and how you're gonna use it and then build the design around that and worry about the looks later. If you have any mistakes that you made during your metal building project, be sure to comment below. We'd love to help our customers so they don't go through the same pain and heartache that you and I went through. Also, if you guys need any advice, be sure to comment below as well. We'd be sure to help you out. This is Tony here with BigBuildingsDirect.com here to give you guys the information you need so that you can get the metal building of your dreams.